With regard to God tier, we have different waves. We're on wave four right now. As a system evolves, we see new war bands. We see new tactics within those war bands. And of course, God tier playing one to three war bands, you have a lot of synergy. So within that, and this is true with any wargaming system, there's what I call auto includes. Certain units, certain ships, or in this case, God tier, certain war bands that they're just solid. They're just solid all around. If I, I don't know what synergies or what war bands I'm going to potentially face, if I'm not sure of the maps or the missions, these are the war bands that you can pull off a lot of interesting tactics and hold your own. And Half Tusk is a great example of this. He is one of my favorite characters to play. The side note to that is there's a lot to play in God Tier. There's just too many amazing, amazing war bands. But Half Tusk is a character that I regularly play, and he just works on all levels. And on top of that, the fact that he was a Wave 1 release and we're Wave 4 in, if you're thinking about jumping in and you're looking at the war bands, yes, you're going to eventually get around to all of them, but Half Tusk can hold his own. So the first thing is, Half Tusk is, a, is not a slayer, but he behaves like a slayer based on the synergy of his two abilities. The ability to do one punch, two punch. Two punch is a free action. One punch is a first attack. That means you're getting two attacks in potentially each round. If you're planting banners, if you're smashing and knocking down banners, or you're forced to engage champions, he can hold his own. He absolutely can. Add to this regeneration, where, yes, you are going to be sacrificing two attacks, but to be able to attack and to regen without moving, if you're camping somewhere, that's huge. That is absolutely huge, which means he's just going to soak up those wounds. Non-slayers are going to have a very, very difficult time. I won't say impossible, because you can always roll legendary. They're going to have a difficult time taking him out. But Slayers going against him, the Red Champions, the Red Warbands, they're still going to take a couple of turns. He's just going to absorb those hits while returning them at the same time. So from that perspective, absolutely. Now, being a blue, he's going to get that bonus point when he plants the banner and the banner interaction. That works out great because I'm going to be right up there midfield into those pile of tears. Uh, I'm not going to be kind of... um camping in the back like a green champion, just hanging out, throwing buffs and, and working on piles of tears near my deployment zone. Half Tusk is going to be up there right in the mix. One punch, two punch, regeneration. Now, the, the froglets, they're interesting because they are not attack oriented. They are not attack based. And you only have three, which means we're going to be utilizing those um, for area control or we're going to be utilizing them for the interaction with the banners. They're kind of unique in that what we see with most of the followers that follow a champion, they break down into to two things. Es essentially buff magnets in that they can cast out um, positive or negatives to the attributes. Or they're attack-based. They're going to add a little bit of dice. They're going to add a little bit of weight to it. The froglets are interesting because they're, they're really neither. But they can move through tiers. That is something very, very interesting because for the most part, you cannot move on or through objective hexes. You could fly over them, but you can't move through them. That ability means uh, where you have a tier pile for most of the missions, I can be on the left side with my froglets, pulling them up. You move to intercept. I can hop across over the pile of tiers and, and essentially leave your followers hanging off to an inactive side of the board. Or if I need to be on one side of the tiers versus the other as, as units to block, very, very potent, very, very powerful. Talking about um, banner manipulation. Now, lots of ways to score points in God tier. And we can get into this, and I've gotten into this and pushed it up to the channel under the God tier playlist. You can build your war band to focus on one way of earning tiers. So you're like, I'm going to go in and knock down followers and knock down champions and get all Killian with the dice. 
That's what I'm going to focus on. You could say I'm going to work on planting banners and knocking down my opponent's banners. I'm going to go for banner control, pushing that aspect on it. You can look at tier manipulation and manipulation of objectives. You could focus on that. You could combine all that. Um, depends on one to three war bands. Obviously, if you're playing one war band, you're going to focus on primarily one area. If you're playing two or three, it, it opens up. But with the froglets, the ability to move the banner or move units closer, that's interesting because you can pull them into some interesting synergies with half tusk, one punch, two punch regen, um, especially if there's a champion that's trying to run away or um, a unit of followers that's you know down to the last one or two and you want to kind of get some points on it. You can kind of downgrade them with the, with the debuffs and hit them. A lot of interesting things with the manipulation of those followers. My only criticism, well, it's not really a criticism, right? You play a skirmish game and you're like, I want this, I want this, I want everything. Well, there's got to be some balance. I mean, Half Tusk excels in a lot, but the two areas that they're weaker in, so let's push at that, you only have three froglets. This is not, um, this is not a high model count warband, which means for the most part, I'm going to be keeping the three focused for the synergy. I'm not really going to break things up. And as you take losses, you're really going to affect that. This is where um, I find playing the followers, the froglets, important to keep them alive. Absolutely. Not only as a way to deny my opponent's scoring points, but given that um, Half Tusk is going to be very aggressive with regeneration and attacks and moving, I don't want to be spending recruit actions. I don't want to be spending any action resources to get more of my followers on the table. So keeping them alive to not only deny points, but to not bring them back into the game, that, that is key. So I need to be a little bit more conservative. You only have the three followers. There are much, much bigger war bands or, or even war bands with large followers that are going to give you those. The second is overall half tusk is is one of the slower models. I mean, it, it makes sense. He's like a lumbering troll. He's not overly fast. What that means is um, in smaller war bands, taking first turn and planting tiers and taking tiers and planting banners first turn, it's going to be a little bit hard. If you're playing one war band, it's going to be impossible if I'm just playing half tusk. If I'm playing with two or three, then uh, I need something quicker to get up there and it's not going to have that support turn one. So Half Tusk is more of a turn two, three, four, camp, hang out, one punch, two punch, regen, get into camping on that core pile of tears in the center. Then um, some of the other quick move war bands get up there, get some early points, pull back or stay camping on any tiers near your deployment zone. But again, just I, I think, in my opinion, a solid, solid war band a solid, solid champion. If I don't really know what to take because I don't know what I'm facing, every time I've taken him, he has excelled. There's a lot of solidness to play. And again, this is a wave one. This is a wave one release. I think this is also um, really highlighting the design theory and how tight it is with God tier in that you can pull in wave four war bands and they're fantastic and they look amazing and they've got a lot of great synergies wave three wave two wave one all of them are are solid with how they play which is very unique compared to other skirmish based war games